My name is Edwin Borsheim. Yeah, hi, how are you doing? Yes, I'm here to tell you, okay? I daydream every day about taking as many fucking lives as I fucking possibly can, okay? I dream about walking out into the intersection, opening fire into your fucking car, ending your fucking life right there on the sidewalk. I daydream watching your fucking fellow pedestrians get ran over by your fucking bumper as I open fire through your fucking windshield. Troubles come by threes, doing what they want to, instead of doing what they ought to. I've got mine, some are quickly passed, others seem to last all on. Salvation. Comes for free, sailing on the shadows. It widens and it narrows. I've got mine. If heaven were lined with gold, heaven would be bought and sold. Hold on. Sing a song. Sorrow of truth forever bending, always hopeful, never ending. I've got mine, tears beyond control. Try to clean my soul. Hold on. Edwin Borsheim was a vocalist for a band called Kettle Cadaver. Kettle Cadaver was was a band from Temecula, California, mid to late 90s. One of, if not the most terrifying and dangerous bands of all time. And their live performances generally consisted of intense self-mutilation and a lot of violence on the uh, audience. We used to all skate together, and then Ed was like the older brother who kind of nobody ever saw. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and then I remember the first time I ever, like, going into his room, I was like, yeah, on a like Genius Street. Like, okay, yeah. yeah on a it's Genius all coming street. back yeah. now. That's funny. And it was just like everything was black, like, you know, skeletons and skulls and stuff everywhere. But so we were basically stuck in Temecula. So we'd do backyard parties. It was fucking miserable. And the cops hated us for doing that. So the cops would come there and bust all of our shit up. I mean, that was pretty much what started all of it. It was like we were stuck in our own little vortex of hell. And the cops were pissed that we were stuck there. So we would fight over it all the time. And they had nothing else to do except try to control a bunch of. Kids, 16 year old yeah. kids or younger. Make things yeah. worse. So, that, and I mean, the fact that we we're stuck in like the suburbia, not that we we're some outcast punk rockers, but I mean, I guess we kind of were in a way. So, all the grungy kids that got even worse did more drugs, had more shows in their backyards, pissed their parents off more, pissed the cops off more. And it just, we kind of separated ourselves from all the towns around us and it all just absorbed into Temecula. As a little kid and having Edwin as an older brother was never a bad thing. Edwin would take us into behind these hills as a runoff of this lake where there's cars blown up and bolt holes in them and shit like that. And we would go back there and we would just fuck around all day. And then we would come back behind his house and we'd roll boulders down the fucking hill. He has a really big influence on us. I had actually been like terrified of the idea of Kettle Cadaver for a while, even though I was extremely intrigued. But it was like I'd heard all these weird stories and I was still just a kid, barely getting into metal or punk or any of this stuff. And I was like, this is what's going on in our little community here. Like this, this 
horrifying mutilation. Because I remember even before the DVD, the lore around school and around town was Ed's gonna kill himself, uh, you know, on stage. And, you know, people are really excited to see this. It was like, what the fuck? Hello. Hello. Open says me. There's all kinds of stuff if you look around. I got up one morning and I was just in a bad mood. My guitar wouldn't tune right, so I smashed the shit out of it. Got my coffee again, they took a picture. Roz and uh, a guy named Eric and uh, Jatan's son, when he was 13, he's 30 now, um, they sat around one night and they did that artwork. So she kept that. So I did this one. It's just, I just thought, I love the bleakness of it, you know? I have a fetish for like, you know, cut off hands and cut off heads, stuff like that. Like when I die, I, I want them to cut my head off and, and my hands. Um, there's the Gigi Allen toilet seat. Come on in, you guys. Oh, yeah. The, no collection is oh, worth it unless you got this. <laughs> Two of my favorite videos ever. Much before I met him, I uh, had gotten a gift certificate for Tower Records. So I start scrolling through all the DVDs. Then all of a sudden, I see this one, Kettle Cadaver, A Taste of Blood. And I look at the cover, I'm like, Whoa, that looks pretty gnarly. We're watching this and we're just like jaws dropped, you know? I mean, it just got like the willies just like going. And mind you, I had only heard the tales. So once I finally saw the DVD and saw exactly what, what it was, I was like, God damn, it was real. These stories were real. Like, he, he really did all this stuff. He didn't kill himself, but holy shit, he came close almost, you know, like. Seeing some of this, I'd never seen a person do these things. I've still never seen a person do these things.